place to do what I and everybody else in this place was elected to do, to debate the issues that affect their constituents and to vote on those issues yeah, in the yeah, way that yeah. we believe is the best to support our constituents. And the eyes definitely had it last week. 299 votes to zero in favour of pausing the full rollout of universal credit until the problems encountered in the pilot scheme are fixed. But not only did the government forfeit their right to vote, they're ignoring the result, <coughs> pretending it's not happening, and burying their heads in the sand. Yeah. Coastal, I will. My honourable friend, for giving way, and uh, would she agree with me? There is one thing for the government to ignore members on this side of the House, but it's certainly another thing, and foolhardy and irresponsible for the government to ignore organisations such as Shelter, the CAB, Gingerbread, yeah. the Child, Child Poverty yeah. Action Group, to name but a few, who are at the absolute forefront of dealing with the chaos of this rollout of universal credit. Well said. I certainly would. Such is the arrogance. Coastal Housing, one of the leading social housing providers in my constituency, tell me that 90% of their tenants who are already on the pilot scheme are behind on their rent. In total, these tenants are over £73,000 in arrears, with averages approximately of £830 each. And Coastal Housing and their tenants have told me of a series of problems. The initial seven-day waiting period does not cover housing costs. The month-long assessment period, followed up by the seven-day wait for the money to pay into the bank, is putting too many people in debt before they've even started on the scheme. And people are being forced to rely on food banks for the first time ever while they wait for their money. And yet, despite all these issues of this pilot scheme, the government thinks this is the best way forward is to plough on regardless. Which means, on December the 13th, when the scheme rolls out in Swansea, I am anticipating mayhem for far too many vulnerable people. It doesn't take a mathematician to work out that if you transfer 12 days before Christmas and the payments take between 35 and 42 days to appear in your bank account, there are going to be a lot of Swansea residents in dire straits at the worst possible time. No money, I will. Thank the Honourable Lady for giving way. She's making a very powerful speech. Does she agree with me that if the government had a heart, it would put that pause on the rollout of universal credit before Christmas and indeed on other benefit sanctions so that nobody goes without over the Christmas period? Yeah. I, I certainly do agree with the Honourable Lady. No money, no support services open over the festive period means that my most vulnerable constituents are going to be desperate. Where is this government's compassion? How could she refers to mayhem. Can I just tell her that in my area, uh, universal credit was rolled out 15 months ago, and there are some problems. There's, there's no doubt about it, but it is certainly not mayhem. And the, inter uh, and the measures brought in by the government in recent weeks will certainly fix the vast majority of those problems. So can I give her some comfort, and hopefully her constituents some comfort, that this yeah. will not be mayhem? We do not agree, and I can give you examples from the summer when there was mayhem even before the system became into operation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many members on the benches opposite can be so oblivious to the predicament they are putting people in? And if you be quiet, you listen to what I've got to say. During the summer holidays, I became aware of the empty shelves in my local food bank. These shelves were empty because mothers couldn't afford to feed their children. They were relying on free school meals during term time, but during the school holidays, they had no, cho no choice other than to visit food banks. So I decided to do something. I set up a lunch club for local children, and I anticipated that me and my team would feed 500 children. And do you know how many children I ended up feeding over 10 days? 6,638. That was the scale of the problem, and that was before universal credit. So on how on earth are constituents going to cope at Christmas with less money coming in and even greater demand for money going out? Should I start planning a Christmas lunch club now? Because I can go and ask local companies for donations yet again. Or will the government please open your eyes, look at the situation that you are creating, and put a hold on the rollout until the fundamental flaws in this ridiculous universal credit are resolved. Yeah.